Every man's dream I got. The main course. I think we're going to have to have um, pan seared uh, sea bass. Okay. And uh, I want a little bit of dessert, selection of fine cheeses. I got the remote control in my hand. And that not only controls the TV right there, but also controls this auto tilt, which sits me back up. I don't even have to use my stomach muscles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on this airport uh, in Tel Aviv, this is just like uh, just like coming through a mall. Yeah, it's, it's like beautiful. Like Woodgrove Mall in Nanaimo. Yeah, just beautiful. Well, right, here's Mike, our tour guide. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and here's the rest of our group gathering here, getting ready. For the big trip to Bethlehem. But it is where we're going right now, right? Yep. <laughs> Day one. Some others uh, arrived today, um, but you are all uh, Americans on this bus, uh, different churches. Yeah. Um, before I start, we have a lot to share together. My name is Mike. It, it's actually from Michalis, Greek name, as I grew up in Greece but I was born here in Israel. Um, uh, I do serve EO groups since about uh, 15 years. Um, I do teach uh, Bible and I do my MA in Biblical Archaeology right now. You are here. You are not anymore there. And this is the meaning of welcome home because from this moment, you stepped in what we call the Bible land. And from this moment, I and you, we will experience Jesus as never before. We will experience the Bible as never before. And we will try our best to understand the Bible in depth. Some of you will feel the touch of the Savior in this place or the other place. And those of you who have been here before, they understand what I mean. You will feel it, friends. And I'm sure for in the state. No, here what we will do, we will read and we will try to understand why here. Why not in Hawaii? Why not in Florida? Why not in I don't know where? You will see some sites, friends, that Jesus chose those sites because there's a meaning behind it. The topography of the land. Right. Like where the baptism took place, where the transfiguration took place, where the crucifixion took place, where Capernaum is located, the, the different miracles that he did. All of that to get together, when you will see the site, and the topography of the land, you will try to think, why here, not anywhere else? Why this is the Bible land, not anywhere else? We were eight, uh, the lost in the desert and having no roofs. Uh, so... Try to understand why Jerusalem, not anywhere else. Why here, not anywhere else. Golden and white and gray, all together. That's Jerusalem, the old city there, the valleys around, the hills, Mount of Olives, like one o'clock to your left hand now to the right side of the bus. That's Jerusalem, my friends, where the resurrection took place. New life was given to all of you and me and all of us there. Here, where you are today. No more green. It's wilderness. Judean wilderness. Okay, that's Jordan there and Jericho and the Dead Sea. So we are turning back and going back to the road number one to take us to Bethlehem. As I live in the heart of Jerusalem and I love it so much, but I, I feel also that wherever you live, in the state, wherever in the whole world, and you have Jerusalem always in your heart. And you love it as I love it. Because we have something in common that connecting us to Jerusalem. I had breakfast at that hotel, and I will come early tomorrow to enjoy it with you. Um, yes, numbers on the cars, they are green and white. 
in Jerusalem it's uh, yellow like this one here so that means that he is uh, Israeli Palestinian or Palestinian living in Jerusalem having Israeli ID uh, many groups from Europe recently they stay in Bethlehem and um, uh, Israel and Palestinian Authority they do cooperate in a good way uh, about tourism so they give like easy access to both sides which is good. I like that cooperation. It's Beth it's Bethlehem out there. Oh, yeah. We got some people eating. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> God bless you, friends, and wish you a lovely, shiny day. You get to wear a hat. Yes. A of if you have a hat. This area is West Bank, but it's Area C, means controlled by Israeli forces. Look here at the shepherds with their goats and sheep. Look here to the right. They are sleepy in the shady area. Look at that donkey waiting for his shepherd. Hello. What's that? You feel like a rat. <laughs> down the rabble. Look at the fields all the way down. All those are olive trees. And we will share more about olive industry later. As olive industry, as that time, as today, is the main income. But in wartime, they just with the drew from the door, the lower part, and just come and settle in, settle in the upper part here inside the mountain. Those stones were being used by the defenders on the top to throw on the heads of the attackers. We have 500 years since from now the Turkish era. The Turks, the Ottomans, they settled here in this land for 400 years. Here's spiritual place for me, and I know it was for the shepherds also. Uh, this is a, a wonderful thought that I want you to carry with you. The shepherds were the lowest of the low. Not many people dealt with them. But who was the first ones that the angels announced that Jesus Christ was born? It was those shepherds. And to me, that paints a beautiful picture that Christ is forever. And the wings, and the feet, and the foot, and the star, uh, we go out from here, and I want you to look it up. And that's where we go in, up on the top, that's where we came from. We will share that with me, it's crazy. And we will enjoy the birth of Christ today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A narrow entrance, and the reason for that 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 narrow entrance was made crusader time to avoid horses to go in there. Uh, the moment we go in, the men take your hat off, please. Okay. If any of you will sit down inside the church later, notice that in the Holy Land here in Israel and Palestinian territories, in our local churches, we don't cross our legs. That's very important. If you that's why they came here all the way from Nazareth. Mary came here. We have many mothers in our group. As a mother, you have your child in you. It's the time to give birth. But you know that someone following you to kill that child. What to do? It was very, very problematic. And she didn't know what to do. She came here. She looked for a hidden place to stay in. She didn't find hotels or whatever, or ends, then she found a hidden cave. The cave that we will visit in a few minutes came to us as to be the cave where Jesus was born. Number two, she was afraid for the child because Herod, she heard that Herod the crazy, want to kill the child. So she gave birth. Following the details later, then we know that the angels came to Joseph, asked him to take the Holy Family, and to keep them safe, so they wandered for about two years till Herod the crazy died. Later, the archaeologists, they found hundreds or thousands of little pieces of bones of children 
and also big ones for mothers, believed to be for the mothers who had the child in their hands. So they killed the child and the mother. Now, that we are not worshipping Mary, but she was chosen. She was honored by the Lord to have the child. Gentiles today. Today? Today, yes. Is there anybody that we think is not worthy of being in the church? Thank you so much for that. Stephanie, what do you think? Anyone who does not know about God? But think of this. At that time, we had two sides. We had Jews who received the work by Moses. Then Jesus came and he asked the disciples after him to take the word to everyone. We had Jews and Gentiles. Jews and non-Jews. And every church today got its own cross, like the Orthodox cross, the Catholic cross, the Armenian cross, but the Byzantine cross looked like that one. So they added that on that capital to give it Christian label. Friends, right, let's go first. Coffin, coffin, yes? As we call it, uh, sarcophagus or sarcophagus. And this, this size or this, you see it's uh, like what you call uh, the stone marble. There, you will see ruins in the water from Herod's private palace. He built his palace in the water. How great crazy was it, that king? That king. Why? Why in the water? Safety. Safety. Now, not only that, this area here was his little private harbor here. And his ship was here. So any moment he will feel danger, he will just take ship and go to where? Rome. And that happened many so that's where probably Paul was imprisoned. That's where the jail where they kept Paul for two years. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered 
the prophets mm -hmm. together unto Mount Carmel. Okay. And videotaping? I'm videotaping. Now, in order to control the whole valley, you have to control every city and village located around and in the valley. And that's what happened, and that's why many fights took place in and around that valley, what we call Jezreel Valley, the biggest bread basket in Israel. Almost the third, Ramses II came here, controlled Megiddo, where we will go up in a minute. And you will see that we will stand on a mountain like this. We will be on the top and we will control the valley. That's in front of 4,000 years old gate. Look at me here. And look at the gate. This is not only one gate, but three chapters. Many Maria. You know, be cheerful, uh, uh, you know, the most, yes. Blessed. Blessed among them, yes. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man who was named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come over you power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look. Most of you will go first. Watch your steps. It's uh, friends, um, okay, there are some factories around uh, this village and there, there is a kind of high percentage of people who received cancer, sick. Oh. So this demonstration is to give the government of Israel and uh, the one in charge here in the village uh, a message that the people of Can... Ancient Kana or Kana is not here. Ancient Kana is across the highway on the other side. I'll show it to you on the way down to Galilee. Just looked at her son. Why? From where? The Annunciation. She knew from the very beginning. Who said that? Thank you. Stephanie, Annunciation. Right. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. We thank both you, said Stephanie. at the same time. Yes, thank you. Okay. Annunciation. She kept that knowledge. She kept that information in her heart. And that was the moment. She knew that her son was the only one to do something. She kept that knowledge. What the angel told her. What he told her. That he will be what? Okay. The son of God. So that means that impossible things will be possible in his hands, yes? Okay. And that's what means that we will be on the boat. That's when I feel peace. Uh, once a week, once a month when I come here with my visitors uh, and we enjoy it. Um, and, and I hope you will feel the same as I do. Um, Galilee. I can't describe for you what it means to be Galilee. What kind of sea Jesus wanted us to be. Um, where he was here between the disciples, the students, and he put those seeds of the humanity in them and many other things actually that we will share today step by step till end of the day
trying to absorb what happens here, trying to understand why this body of water, not any other body. down here and water water always is symbol of life um, water moving and trying to feel Jesus sitting between every one of you now and trying to understand the scripture in depth then looking all around here friends around this beautiful body of water area there with the white shadow that little hill near the water, you see it first? That's where Sermon on the Mount nearby was given. That's where he gave the blessings uh, that he had. Um, when you think of helping the fishermen from one side to the other side, the next from right to left, it's all here in this body of water, not anywhere else. I'm actually walking in the steps of the disciples in Jesus Christ. This is the place of winds and doves. I'm ecstatic. The Herodians followed them and they did what the Romans later, 70 AD, did for the Jewish rebellion in the caves. They laid the soldiers from the top by robes and they surprised the rebellions inside the caves and killed them. <laughs> so that's one of the things that happened up there in the cliff, friends. But look there, friends. friends. Look there. You will see there. And opening, you will see a trail that used to come from the Mediterranean West all the way up to here and then to Mesopotamia. This was the way. Okay, further up, Capernaum is located on this Via Maris. Let's just do it together. The Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Like we started to come on the service between those who accepted him and those who kept rejecting him. Miracles started to be uh, practice or happen, especially in life, without putting all those foundations. Sermon on the Mount, Transfiguration, the Miracle, showing all the power, the teachings, all together, you can see that he did for us to help us to build. We need to kind of go back to the beginning. When Jesus had heard that John had been arrested, John the baptizer, he left to Judea and returned to Galilee. He first went to Nazareth, then left there and moved to the country, beside the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. In the land of Zebulun and of Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Then in Bethsaida, so they settled here. Peter got married and lived in his mother in law there. Under the church, there are ruins there. You will go there. I mean, to be baptized. You're publicly professing your faith again in Christ. And what a wonderful thing it is. I just want to read the scriptures if I can. And where are we at today? The River Jordan. 
This is out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verse number 13. I love this today. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee. Where did we just come from? Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. And John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Because Jesus understood powerfully what? He understood the spiritual truth behind the natural act. This is the, actually the tallest towel in the entire <coughs> Israel. What you see there. 1822 civilizations there. Um, why here? Why everybody wanted to set up here? First of all, Jezreel Valley, Harod Valley, Harod Valley, Gilboa, Jordan Valley there. You see Jordan, Jordanian Hills there, yeah? Mm -hmm. Jordan River there. So water and location and trade routes. That's all. That's what it's all about. So simple. Yep. Greeks, Romans, Christian, VIB Christians. Um, Muslims came here for little. Um, then we don't hear much about uh, Beit Sha'an. When they came and digged here, they found a huge, massive city. A lot of archaeological remains, uh, mostly dated back to 4th century and to 2nd, 1st century before Christ. But this is how the hot room worked. Uh, they used to uh, make fire out there, fire, uh, boil the water, boil it, make it very, very hot, and then let the water run between those chairs uh, or seats. All those chairs or Palestinians, uh, Palestinian police and authority. There is section B, the one that we will go through to Samaria later. That, uh, of course, here is Samaria too, but I mean the heart of Samaria, Nablus, Shechem. Section B means uh, it's in between. Section B is uh, mixed control between Israeli forces and uh, Palestinian Authority. Uh, and that's where actually you will see the roads are broken and uh, uh, it's not like it, the area came out of a war. It's not well organized. Uh, Palestinian police uh, is in charge here inside West Bank, but the area is surrounded around by Israeli forces, as you notice when we came in. Uh, through the checkpoint. Look at how their taxi here, the yellow taxi, green and white uh, uh, car numbers. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's like in Egypt, like in Jordan. It's, it's a symbol, uh, uh, Middle Eastern city, villagers selling their products here to the right. Look, a little mosque here to the right. There is the village of Burkin, that direction, where there is uh, one or two churches there inside, to the right. Uh, ladies here covering their heads, Muslim ladies. Some of them are religious completely, others no, because you can see, when they dress the pants and then the cover on the head means no, they are not religious, but uh, to complement her family or, you know, uh, her husband, whatever. As he is religious, but he wants his wife or daughter to put that cover. Otherwise, they don't. Here, Palestinian police in the middle. They are helping in the traffic, but I see that there's a traffic while he's here. It's very simple, old city. Um, Jenin. Uh, when we go out, you will see the fields of Jenin. Here is the square of the martyrs, they call it. The martyrs, those who are being killed in the conflict between uh, Israel and Palestinian. 
and his brethren, brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. Shechem is uh, Nablus of today, means Samaria. And Israel said unto Joseph, Israel, who was Israel? Friends? Jacob. Jacob. Okay, the man of God. Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem. Come and I will send these unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it will be with thy brethren and well with the flock. And uh, it's, it's still in the villages here. They use olive soap um, in, you know, washing hands or in shower. Even some, they say it's much good, better than shampoo and other things for the hair. So, um, Christians, believers from all over, especially uh, from West Bank and in Israel, when they disappear, Christians, Orthodox, they hang things, the love, the pictures, and other things. A kind of receiving blessing is the wall separating between the public area and the holy section inside. That same idea came from Judaism, from the Temple time, where we had that separation between the holy of holies inside and the bubble. So today, uh, John 4, 3, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then comes he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar. Sychar is all shaken, or Nablus, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Here. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat, sat thus on the well here, and it was about the sixth hour. There comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Living water, friends. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Is deep. You saw how deep it is. From whence then has thou that living water? Are thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the will that drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. This is very special to be here. We are on the top of ancient Jericho. Jericho is four sections. I can say that now here. Ancient Jericho, Old Testament Jer Jericho, New Testament Jericho, and modern Jericho. Ancient Jericho, where you see the stage or the terrace there, the terrace, you will go there later to see down there. And she examined, she found those remains she was the first actually. She examined the stones. She took them to Britain, to England, uh, with carbon, carbon 14. She examined them and she found that those stones from the tower and the wall dated back to 8,000 years before Christ. On the oldest city on earth. From now, dated to 10,000 years old. How much happened here? Rahab, of course, came from here. This was conquered by um, Joshua. Some say not, but it was conquered by Joshua. Elisha put salt and water and made it pure. Son of David, show me mercy. And Jesus stopped and asked for the man to be brought to him. And when he was present, Jesus asked, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. Jesus said, Receive your sight. 
your faith has healed you. And at once the man was be able to see, and he began to follow Jesus, praising God. And when all the people saw it, they praised God too. And then Jesus entered Jericho, and he was passing through. A man there was named Zacchaeus, a ruler among, the ta uh, among tax collectors, and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that spot, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay at your house today. And so Zacchaeus came down at once, happy to welcome Jesus. Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. And Zacchaeus stopped and said, Lord, look, I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anyone, I repay you, or I repay them four times as much. And Jesus said to them, salvation has come to this household because he too is a son of Abraham, the son of man came to seek. We will enter Jerusalem, not like the first day when we came, but we will enter Jerusalem as Jesus did from the east, coming uh, through the wilderness, all the way through Bethany, or in there or on there, many events took place, especially the King of the Kings, when he walked down and then up to the house of God. In Jerusalem, my friends, you can find the solution. Love each other. Love your enemy. We don't need walls. We don't need... So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time. Это то, что здесь огромное количество иностранцев. Потому что это один из самых дорогих районов. I have an uh, Orthodox Jewish group here and they want to have what I'm saying because they want this to be given to but we don't have records, we don't have history. The same hatred of the Jewish council, the Jewish council or Caiaphas house. Down there, we believe that Jesus was kept. We believe that in the deepest depth, in the deepest point, the quarter of the Jewish Council in Jerusalem, as you have to understand why it was important, why it was important to be presented first to Caiaphas. Jesus 
was presented, received three signatures before the crucifixion. The signature of Caiaphas, the Jewish council, the signature of the Herodians, the king, the signature of the Romans, the political power, Pontius Pilate. Brought him, the Romans, all the way back, same way to here. Now, how we understood that this is Caiaphas' house? Inside that, Jesus going and up. Then Peter denial took place somewhere here. You can see the illustrations up there showing how they flagelled Jesus while they brought him back here. And also Peter three times denying Jesus Christ here. So that's why they call the church here, Saint Peter. Five dollars. Like it's picture one dollar. What can I make? One dollar. Five dollars if he gets up. Hey, 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 hey! Blowing kisses, Holly. <laughs> go from sea level, but we're going to go down how many feet? Uh, 2,300 feet. Further to go to Jericho and into the Dead Sea. To the Dead Sea, yep. And here's the wilderness, and we're entering it, and it's below sea level. Hard to believe, huh? So what are your last words up there? <laughs> You notice the Canadian flags, right? Oh, no, we didn't. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Oh, I see it. See, even Canadians know how to swim. <laughs> Don't jump or die. Yeah, there's rules. Boy, you didn't expect the Dead Sea to be so beautiful. The do's and the don'ts. Look at all those people down there having a blast. Didn't all that stuff washed off. All those chemicals. Oh, they like that mud. How's it feel? Let me too. Does it feel okay? Yeah, we get your photo. Maybe we can get a photo. No, ready? Sis, okay, okay. Okay, we're ready. Okay, we're going in. All right, we're going in. I'm going in too. Very gently. Boy, it's warm. I guess I expected it to be cold. Dead Sea. I think I'd be walking it. Here I am. And there's my bro. Boldly going where no man has gone before. Sandy bottom. Look at <laughs> Hey Peter, get off the bottom. without learning at least one or two major lessons how to face our Masadas today and try to understand. She was the only one from his family and she turned into a column of song. You will see some of, like symbolically, some statues or stones like a column to represent Lot's wife, uh, all the way down. Clearly, clearly, ladies, she didn't listen to her husband. <laughs> 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 
traditional stories that you will hear about the Holy Family life. But the question is here, how long they stayed away? He created a colossal film featuring the rebel leader Eleazar, son of Yair, and the Roman commander Flavius Silva in the leading roles. However, in the movie, unlike real life, no one really deals with the dilemmas or personal struggles. No, they're yeah. Two parts of Masada history. The first part connected to the Hasmonean, the Maccabees. I they went to Rome, asked for help. They sent the Ten Legion, and they killed the Maccabees here. So now, when Herod climbed up here after that victory, he enjoyed the place. <coughs> he gave orders to build Masada as a fortress. Herod, even he built that fancy thing here as a fortress, he never been more than 15 days of his life here, according to Josephus Flavius, the historian. His officials took advantage of this and they lived here, they lived here um, till about 66. And that's when the Jews revolted in Jerusalem. So Herod's official 20 AD, 71, a group of Jews called the Zealots, they left Jerusalem um, trying to escape from the Roman punishment and they wandered all over the land. Group of them, 1,000, about 1,000, um, came here to the wilderness. They knew about a fortress by the name Masada. They knew that the officials of Herod left that fortress. Let's see, we're headed down to the towers. Right. Yes. 169 Very. steps down. <laughs> Look at that. All right. There's where the Dead Sea is now shrunk down in size due to declining water, and you can see the double layer here. We're about 230 feet above sea level, so down there is like uh, 1,500 feet up, so it's 1,700 feet below sea level down there at the Dead Sea at this point. Friends, just to do our conclusion about Masada, uh, we enjoyed the site, we enjoyed seeing the stones, but again, I want to put some lights on what happened here. Harry, I'll bring more later. Yeah, okay, come on. We came here to the edge of the country facing the Dead Sea from Jerusalem to Galilee and the plains. We abandoned families, friends, and work to come to the place where we can purify ourselves and properly prepare for the final war that you, somewhere in the future, would hear and see these words. It is God's wondrous plan that brought you today to this pure and sacred place. And God willing, perhaps the secrets may be revealed unto you.
pretty picture there. Right? Yeah, it is. That's one big hole in the ground. Before Jesus and during Jesus' time, we know that the Jews who settled in Jerusalem, the Essenes who had their own special ideology, they settled even in Jerusalem away from the other. Let's leave. Let's go away from here. Let's go to the desert. 29 AD, they came here. They isolated themselves here in a settlement that they built. It's called Qumran. And they took advantage of the rainwater and the springs water running. You can see the lines there. Israeli intelligence, everybody just fall here and they started to look for more writings to sell them. Then the Israeli intelligence and with help from some government, they gathered all those writings. Today, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they are in a secret place in Israel. They do some exhibitions all over the world once a year. The Holocaust Museum, Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem. Yad means hand, Vashem means name. Two major basics, I mentioned in the book of Isaiah, that every human being must have in life. Or two major rights a name and home. But then you can see the chambers or the rooms in the front of the Holy of Holies, the highest building on the top. And actually inside the Holy of Holies, that's the most holy section in the whole temple. So uh, in the room, I will take you down where you will go one way museum under where we are. The video of this hotel. This is the place to stay. Look at that garden. We just had lunch in there. Beautiful. Spot. That great asparagus soup. This used to be a house. It used to be a house, yeah. This used to be someone's home. Yeah. All right, it won't be hard to remember. <laughs> Symbolizes where it is. Oh, 
this is to represent the earthquake. You're under Calvary now, and there's the, 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 the rock that was split when Christ was crucified. <laughs> This is the burial place. We had Jerusalem from the top of the Mount of Olives into the old city. You can understand your directions when, you, when you're doing the journey throughout the, the old town. This is more or less the same. You get the understanding. Saul and the Israelites gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and formed ranks against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for you are just a boy and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and wherever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it, javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Forehead, the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So on this side, the Philistines are on this side. And David's over on this side. Right. Had any of the wines, the local wines, probably you would, you would have came across uh, the Latron wine. It's just across from here where monks still, until this day, use the early traditions of making a walk through the uh, the ruins of the Byzantine church and into the central chapel where until this day uh, Mass is celebrated here uh, remembering the breaking of the bread that's where Jesus uh, sits down with the, with the two and he breaks the bread uh, again reminding us of the institution of the bread uh, Alright, it's our last night together for the big old buffet.